Hello, welcome back to my channel. And welcome to the 10th day of Chanmas. I hope y'all are having a fantastic time watching all of the videos that I've been posting daily. Today, I thought I would take it a little bit easy though and do a bit of a book unhaul. I have been collecting these books since the last time I did an unhaul, which I think was midway through the year this year. And I collected quite a few. I hope before the year is over, I have even more to add to this pile, but I feel like currently there's about 43 books right here that I will be selling to my local half price books. I'm really excited about it because that just means that I have more room on my shelves for books that I truly enjoy and will reread. These books right here run the gamut from books that I enjoyed but won't reread to books that I have no intention of reading anymore. So if you'd like to see my thoughts on these books and why I'm getting rid of them, then keep watching. But let's get into it. The first book that I'm going to be unhauling is one that I really enjoyed when I read it, but it's one that I don't know that I'll read in this format, and it's also a book that I feel like would be better suited for a half price books, if that makes sense. And it is Felix Ever After by Kaysen Callender. I really did enjoy this book. I gave it five stars, but I just don't see myself rereading this, and if I do, I feel like it's going to be an audiobook. Lately, I've just been so much more ruthless on the books that I keep, especially when it comes to YA Contemporary. I said that in my last unhaul, I'm pretty sure, quite a few times, and point still stands here. I am slowly working my way through the backlist and backlog of titles that I have on my shelves, so many of which are YA Contemporary, so it's really no surprise that this one is showing up in an unhaul. Not that it's a bad book, like I said, I really actually enjoyed this book, but I just don't find myself reaching for YA contemporaries anymore. As I'm getting older, I feel like that kind of makes sense. Not that there's anything wrong with enjoying YA contemporary as an older adult, but it's just not a book that I think I'm going to revisit. Next up is a book that I feel like I tried to convince myself that I enjoyed because all of my friends seem to really enjoy this book, and it is Home Before Dark by Riley Sager. I'm finding that I don't necessarily love Riley's work. I really liked Lock Every Door. That's one of my favorite thrillers of all time, but it seems like any of his backlist work or honestly any of the books that he's published after Lock Every Door just haven't really worked for me very well. I feel like the twists are a little cheesy and predictable and upon finishing I want to say it was like Survive the Night whatever his most recent title was it made me kind of revisit my thoughts on this book and while there was kind of a fun twist in this book it's not one that I think I'm going to get more from the more that I read it and there are some thrillers like that I feel like Gone Girl or really any of Gillian Flynn's work I feel like if you revisit it you're getting something new and fresh every time even if you know what to expect with the twists. Whereas something like Riley Sager's work, I just don't really feel like that is the case. So this is a book that I feel pretty confident in passing along, and hopefully someone at Half Price will be really excited to pick up a more recent thriller title. Next up is a pair of books. We have Disrupt You and The Effective Executive. These are last vestiges of my grad school experience. Neither of these were like for a particular class, but for some reason I felt like to stay current and to be a successful business person, I needed to have nonfiction on my shelves and be frequently picking these up. And I'm gonna be honest, I have not picked up a single non fiction, like business related books since graduating, and I don't intend to. I feel like reading is whatever you make it and it is whatever you want it to be. And if you don't want to read a single nonfiction book, I think that is perfectly acceptable. I feel like especially when it comes to things that are a little bit dry and uninteresting. I mean, I haven't read either of these books. Maybe they are fantastic, but I don't need to hang on to them. If I'm going to read something like this in the future, it's going to be an audiobook, but knowing me, it's probably not going to happen. Next up is a book that I have been debating getting rid of for a while now, and it is The Afterlife of Holly Chase by Cynthia Hand. And I enjoyed this book. I thought it was a delightful retelling of The Christmas Carol, but I, again, don't revisit YA hardly ever, and I feel like this is a book that I will likely pick up on audiobook if I'm ever in the mood for it. It's just not one that I feel like, oh my god, it's Christmas time, I need to revisit this book, so why keep it on my shelves if I'm not going to reread it, and if I don't think anyone in my, like, family is going to reread it either. This is not something that, like, Hayden is going to pick up, so why keep it on my shelves? Another one that I debated for a while is I Wish You All the Best by Mason Deaver. This was a really, really good book and I enjoyed reading it. I feel like it is a really important book and it is one of the first Y contemporaries that was published about a non-binary character, which I love, but I don't think that I, again, I'm going to reread this. I will pass this along and I feel like it is going into really, really good hands being at a half price books again, because I feel like this is an important story that should be getting out to more young readers. I'm an old withered reader. I don't, <laughs> I don't need to keep this on my shelves. Also, I don't think I've said it in this video. I try to say it in every unhaul that I do, but I do keep all of my dust jackets in a big Sterilite container in my closet. So I will be putting the dust jacket back on this before selling it. So whoever picks this up will have the full experience of the book. Next up is one that I don't remember putting in this pile, but but I don't think I'm gonna miss it. Mm, that's a really bold thing to say. It is Sadie by Courtney Summers. I want to say this is one of my like best books of the year, whatever year that this came out. I think it was like 2018 or 2019. I thoroughly enjoyed this. I feel like this is a really good YA thriller. Are we going to call it a thriller? I don't know. But <laughs> the copy that I have, I got secondhand and it is in terrible condition. I don't think you can tell, but the like hard cover of it is cracked in half and it came to me like this. So I feel like if I want to own a copy of this book, I want something that's going to hold up a little bit better. I get hardbacks so that they maintain their like shape a little bit better. I'm 
I'm hard on my books, so I want them to stay as pristine as I can keep them. And this one already came to me in pretty bad shape, so I don't really want to hang on to it. And again, it's like, it's one of those books that even though it was a favorite of the year, even though it was something that I enjoyed, I just, I know in my heart of hearts, I'm not going to revisit this book. And I really feel like it is better suited on the shelves of someone who is really going to love it and, and connect with it on a deeper level than even I did. So passing this along. Next up is a book that I have absolutely no qualms about getting rid of. And that is The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue by V.E. Schwab. I didn't like this book. I read this for, oh my goodness, I cannot even remember what video that was. Oh, it was reading the top rated books or the most read books of 2021. One. This being a very high contender, a lot of people have read this book this year. I'm glad that I read it for that video and I'm glad that I got the experience of reading this book. However, I didn't connect with this in any regard. I don't really connect with V.E. Schwab's writing typically, which I said in that video, but it does kind of pay me to get rid of this because it is, it is a really beautiful book and, you know, so much detail was put into the crafting of this particular book in terms of the engraving on the front or embossing, I guess you could say. The, there's like birds. Yeah, it's a pretty book and all of the special editions are always so appealing when I go into like a Target. I think Target has like a red edition right now, but I didn't like the story, so I don't need to hang on to the book. Another one that was for that same video, and it is also another very beautiful book, is The Four Winds by Kristen Hanna. I'm not a historical fiction girly. I have figured that out about myself. I have since decided that I'm not going to be doing a historical fiction reading vlog because it's just not my thing which is good. I think this book really solidified that for me. So thank you, The Four Winds by Kristen Hanna, for letting me know that historical fiction, just not my thing. I already kind of knew that, but this, like, it really cemented it for me. This was a pretty solid story. It was a three-star read for me, and it is focused on the Great Depression and the Dust Bowl. I am grateful for the knowledge I've gained from this book. However, it's depressing as hell all of Kristen Hanna's books are, and I just, <laughs> why hang on to something like that? I know that no one that I know uh, would be interested in picking this up. Maybe, maybe not no one that I know, but none of my close family or friends are gonna want to pick this up. So I don't need to hang on to it for me or for them. Next up is a book that I feel like pairs well with my last unhaul, and it is The Poet X by Elizabeth Acevedo. I really enjoyed this book. I also really enjoyed Clap When You Land, which is another one that I had in that video, but I feel like I like Elizabeth Acevedo's work better on audiobook. This is something that I could see myself rereading compared to a lot of these other YA titles, but this is one that, again, I would rather consume over audio, so I am going to sell this to my local half first books. Next up is a fantasy read, shockingly, uh, The Hundred Thousand Kingdoms by N.K. Jemisin. I ended up giving this book four stars when I read it for this adult fantasy reading vlog I did earlier in the year. And while I really enjoyed this book, I liked, again, the listening experience better than reading it physically. Fantasy is such a hit or miss genre with me, which is something that I'm really learning this year. There are not very many fantasies that really stick to my shelves. There are not a lot of fantasies that after reading I really want to revisit. And again, while I liked this book, I don't really see myself continuing on with the series, so I don't really feel like I need to keep this first book. Next up, we have two books in a series that I have been hanging on to for, oh my god, I think since before I had a channel, and they are Winger and Standoff by, I want to say, Andrew Smith. These books I read, I want to say, like, my senior year of high school or something like that, and I really liked them. They are some of the first books that I ever read with queer characters. I have since sort of rethought my feelings on these books, though. They definitely are not perfect in terms of representation, and the queer character, I think, gets killed off in the first book. Not exactly the representation that we're looking for. Again, I am grateful for what these books did for me when I read them back in high school, but they're not books that I need to keep on my shelves or that I would necessarily revisit. I keep telling myself, oh, I'll go back and reread these books, and I just never do, so I don't need to hold on to them. Next up is a book that I absolutely hate and I'm so excited to get rid of, and it is One Day in December by Josie Silver. I read this for one of my list videos that I did this year. I can't remember which at this point, but this is a book about cheating, basically. Basically hooking up with your best friend's boyfriend, and I don't abide by that, personally, and I just didn't like the story. It was boring as hell, and it was very um, looks-centric. It was a very looks-centric romance, if you will. Love at first sight sort of thing. Wow, couldn't get that out well, but I don't like, I don't like this book. I'm getting rid of it and I won't miss it. Next up, I have a mini stack of mass market paperbacks, so we'll briefly run through these. I have Voyager by Diana Gabaldon. Uh, this is one of the first books in the Outlander series. No, the third book. It's definitely not the first book. It's the third book. I picked this up because it looked really old and impressive. It has like a unexciting step back, and I was like, you know what? I'm gonna see if I can collect all of these in the original step backs. I'm not gonna do that, and I'm not gonna read these books either. What what was I thinking? Uh, I think I was thinking that it was $3.99, and that seemed like a good deal at the time. The show was enough for me. Like, if I want to visit this series in any sort of sense, it's gonna be that way. Next is one that I've been holding on to purely because I like the step back. I mean, I, I took a picture 
pleasure with this book because I like to step back and it is Desperate Duchesses by Eloisa James. I have read this book. I did not enjoy it. And if you're looking for one of the strangest, most non-traditional historical romances out there, you definitely pick this one up. It's told kind of in three different stories. I mean, they're all like interwoven and none of them are particularly interesting or good. So if you're looking for a historical romance, don't pick this one up. Next up is one that I did enjoy, but I do have a hardcover copy of somewhere around here. And it is Say No to the Duke by Eloisa James. This is one that I did really like. This is the book that started my love of Eloisa James. She has a very different sort of historical romance writing voice, especially compared to someone like a Tessa Dare, who has kind of this easy breezy writing style. I like her books because it's not like they're inaccessible in their writing, but they feel almost more authentic to the time periods in which they are written in. So while I really enjoyed this book, I have a different copy. I don't need to keep this one. Another book that I liked, but I don't really need a physical copy of is White Hot by Elena Andrews. I enjoyed this book a whole hell of a lot. I really enjoyed the series, but I don't really feel like I need to hold on to the mass market paperback version of it. I don't know. I went through this phase of buying a ton of mass market paperbacks because it was kind of the popular thing to do, but I just don't love having them on my shelves. They don't fit quite right. And I tend to pick up um, audiobook copies of those types of books anyway. It's like, why hold on to the physical copy? So next up, mm, Once Burned by Janine Frost. I read this for a video. I did not enjoy it. It gave me, I don't know. I don't want to say bad vibes, but it just is not the kind of vampire romance that I'm personally looking for or I'm interested to carry on with. Like I'm not going to carry on with the series. I don't want a mass market paperback anymore. Goodbye. Next up is a book talk darling. We were liars by E. Lockhart. I enjoy some of E. Lockhart's work. This is not one of them. It is, I don't know what I would call this, like a YA mystery kind of, like psychological mystery. It's not good. It's not good. It's not good. I'm getting rid of it. Next up, we have a book that I read for a taste test, and that is The Girl with the Loving Voice by Abhi Dare. I did really enjoy this book. I felt like it was super, super powerful, but this is not the kind of fiction that I tend to pick up, and it's definitely not the kind of fiction that I would revisit. This was a very hard-hitting contemporary about a young girl who's trying to kind of escape poverty and also become educated so that she can live a better life. Again, powerful story, but it's incredibly sad and incredibly downtrodden for most of it. I just don't see myself picking this up again, and I think someone else would have a better time having this on their shelves than I would. Next up is While We Were Dating by Jasmine Guillory. I read this for a video. I picked this up on my own though because I thought that this was a book not in Jasmine Guillory's like wedding date or wedding party series. I think it's the wedding date series. And it's not. It's actually a part of that series. So I didn't really exactly get what I bargained for. I did enjoy this story and I did like the focus on mental health in it. I don't think it's one that I'm going to revisit and I'm holding out hope that Jasmine Guillory's next title is not in this series and I can like fully enjoy that one more. I don't know. I just feel like that whole series has a vibe and an energy to it that to me just always gives me like three star vibes. <laughs> not a bad way. I just I have not connected with any of those stories and I'm hoping that she's able to kind of like break out of that and have a good five star read sometime soon. Her books aren't bad. I just, I haven't connected with any of them. I'm ready to get rid of this one. Next up, we have My Favorite Half Tonight Stand by Christina Lauren. I was trying to read Christina Lauren's backlist for a video because I've read a lot of their books and I figured it wouldn't be that much more effort to read the rest of their titles. I was wrong. It has been a lot of effort and I don't know if I'm going to be posting a kind of guide to video or not. This was just not a, a win for me. This was not a book that I personally really enjoyed. I feel like there was too much lying going on for this to be redeemable for me. So I don't really need to keep this on my shelves. Another YA contemporary, more happy than not by Adam Silvera. I read this, I don't know why. I, I did read it for a video the vlog is somewhere. But I, I don't remember much about this book. The only thing that I can truly remember is that memories get erased and that there's no happy ending, which is fine. I don't need a happy ending in all of my contemporaries. In fact, I don't really expect them unless it's like a contemporary romance, obviously. This just didn't do it for me. And I feel like the other Adam Silvera book that I read, I liked more than this one, I think. So... I'm gonna get rid of this. Next up is The Wicker King by Kate Ingram. I know that this is a darling for a lot of people. It was not for me. I read this for a taste test for Mina. I understand why people enjoy this book. It definitely has a very distinct vibe and a distinct energy to it. And it does give me a lot of like 90s vibes. So if you want that, a book that kind of feels like the movie 13, but about boys, this might be for you. It just, it wasn't really for me. Next up is Birthday by Meredith Russo. This is another contemporary. It's one that I originally really enjoyed. Hindsight, I've kind of rethought some of my thoughts on this book and this author. And just generally speaking, again, I don't really keep white contemporaries. There's, I can name probably five off the top of my head that I like feel passionately about keeping. This is not one of them. Another one that I don't feel passionately about keeping is Emergency Contact by Mary H.K. Choi. There was a lot of stuff in this book that I really did connect with and did really enjoy, especially some of the commentary on like family and our heroine's relationship with her mother. It was something that while I don't have the same relationship with my mother, I did, I did relate to in some ways and it was interesting to read about. But as a story, 
on its own. I don't really understand the hype behind this one. It just didn't have a vibe or an energy really that I enjoyed. And I keep saying vibe, but really that is such a big component of books. And I think y'all understand that, especially those of you who like dark academia and stuff like that. It's not so much about the plot and the characters and all of that. It's about how, how you feel reading the book sometimes. And this book gave me bad feelings and I didn't really like it. I think I gave it two or three stars and definitely won't be revisiting. Next is one, oh my god, I think I read this two years ago at this point, Hunted by Megan Spooner. It's a retelling of Snow White, maybe? Snow White and the Huntsman? I have no fucking idea if I'm being completely honest. I don't need to keep this. Obviously, I don't remember anything about it. Next up is one that I'm actually kind of on the fence about, and y'all can let me know in the comments down below if you think I should keep this one or not. And it is The Vanishing Half by Britt Bennett. This is one that I gave four stars to. I actually did really enjoy this book, and I did feel like it was really powerful and said a lot. Totally understand why this won the Book of the Year title last year, but I don't know that I'll revisit it. Again, this is a historical fiction title, and I just don't pick up historical fictions again. The only reason that I'm tempted to keep this book is because I feel like I could see myself loaning this out to someone, whether that be Hayden or a different family member or something like that. So part of me wants to keep this book. I do think it's important. I definitely enjoyed it when I read it, but I just don't know that I will reread it. So do I keep it in hopes that I can pass it along to someone? I, I'm not sure. Let me know if I should keep it or not, but this is on the unhull pile as of right now. Next up, Olivia or Katie or anybody who likes a series look away. I'm getting rid of the three books that I have in the Diviner series. <laughs> I feel really bad doing this, uh, especially since I have the beautiful first, I don't want to say first printing of the Diviners, but you know, the one that had the pretty, the pretty dust jacket on it. I found this uh, used a couple of years ago and I've been holding on to it because it's so pretty. And I decided to give this series a second chance. This year, I read the first book for a video. It might have just been a casual vlog, to be honest. I didn't enjoy it the second time around. I distinctly remember not enjoying this first book in high school, which was kind of a big deal for me at the time because there were very few books in high school that I remember distinctly disliking, this being one of them. And I was, I was thinking maybe I was just immature and I didn't understand the full scope of like why this is so fantastic. So I picked it up this year to, you know, give it a second chance and it just still is not my thing. I think I gave this two stars, maybe three stars. I think I gave it three stars this time around, but it wasn't enough to make me want to continue on with the series, especially since these books are so long, like so long. It's honestly kind of a pain to hold these up because they're so heavy. I don't need to keep these. It also kind of bugs me that none of the books go together. Like they don't look coherent. I think they are getting the recover treatment from like fairy loot or one of those boxes, but I'm not going to read these. I mean, I, I need to get rid of them at this point. <laughs> okay, next up, we're going to do these in two rounds because I can't pick them all up at the same time, but I'm getting rid of... And again, it kind of pains me because these books are really pretty. Nevernight Trilogy by J. Kristoff. I'm getting rid of these for, you know, reasons told and untold. I just am not going to read these. Like, realistically speaking, I have had these for years. One of these books, yeah, you can tell right here, this one, was sitting on the windowsill in the first place I ever lived in with Hayden, like, four years ago, and I still have not read it. And you can tell I, it was sitting on the windowsill because it's yellowed. I'm just not going to read it, frankly. I'm not going to read it, and I don't know how I feel about Jay as an author anyway. I don't have a super big interest, um, especially in this series. Like, oh no. An assassin? Do I like assassin stories? I keep telling myself I do, but I don't think that I really do. So I'm gonna get rid of these. Hopefully I can find the dust jackets. I think I got rid of them in, in thinking that I was going to keep these books forever, but frankly I'm not. Hopefully someone will find these at Half Price Books and be ecstatic that the UK covers are in the US. So anyway, getting rid of these. And then kind of following along, ow, in that same vein, I just scratched my leg with the corner of one of these books. The Illuminae Files? Is that what they're called? I think so. Mm. These books by Jay Kristoff and Amy Kaufman. I really, really enjoyed Illuminae when I read it. I distinctly remember the graduation trip that I went on after college. It's like a quick little trip to Florida, but I remember reading this book and not paying any attention to Hayden during that trip because I was so into this book. But I have not been compelled to pick up any of the other books in this series, and I think a big part of that is that my tastes have changed and I also just don't really like sci-fi. I mean, the first book was compelling enough to keep me interested, but like not enough to make me read the other books. So I don't know. That's kind of where I'm at on this series and kind of ugly too. Not to be a, an asshole, but I do kind of care about the way the books look on my shelves and these are not exactly pretty. So I'm going to pass these along. I hope whoever gets these is super excited about them, but just not really for me. Now we're down to the last four books. These are looking at them, not very exciting, but I'll, I'll try to make it brief. First up, we have How to Behave in a Crowd by Camille Bordas. I got this. Oh my goodness. I can't remember why someone sent this to me. I didn't request this title. They just sent it to me as and I don't know what it's about. Don't need to keep this book. Next is one that I've had for so, so long. Again, I think I had this one when I was living with Hayden the first time or the first year that I lived with him because it's got the yellowed uh, pages as well. And it is Saints and Misfits by 
SK Ali. This is another one that I think that I had when I first started living with Hayden like four years ago. So I've had this book for quite a while. I did finally read it this year. I'm glad that I read it, but I don't need to keep it on my shelves. I didn't enjoy it very much. I think I gave it two stars and um, it's time to let this one go. And then the last two are again YA contemporaries. We have Starfish by Kemi Dawn Bowman and The Last True Poets of the Sea by Julia Drake. I felt kind of neutrally about both of these. Starfish I felt like was really powerful in the relationship between again the mother and the daughter. For some reason mother-daughter stories really really work for me. I think a lot of people have complex relationships with their mother and so reading about them can be either cathartic or you know horrible to read about. For me it's kind of like cathartic and nice but Starfish um, I enjoyed but I just don't think I'll pick it up again. And then The Last Year Poets of the Sea by Julia Drake. I um, I really don't understand the hype of this one. This is a book that a lot of my friends have given five stars to but those people also tend to really like YA contemporary so that kind of makes sense. This is interesting. No it's not interesting. I give it three stars because it wasn't interesting. I don't know what to say about it. I mean it's set kind of by the sea <laughs> and talks a little bit about family legacy and also like relationships with siblings and stuff like that. Uh it was fine. It just wasn't really for me. So those are the 43-ish books that I am getting rid of. I am honestly I feel really good. I feel really good that I've done this video now because I can sell them to my half-price books and not have them lingering in my closet. I hope that you all enjoyed this in some small way but thanks so much for watching. I love y'all so much and until tomorrow.